The purpose of Wealth Talk is to educate, inform, and hopefully entertain you on the subject of building your wealth. Wealth Builders recommends you should always take independent financial, tax, or legal advice before making any decisions around your finances. Welcome to episode 125 of Wealth Talk. My name is Christian Rodwell, the Membership Director for Wealth Builders, and I'm joined today by our founder, Mr. Kevin Whelan. Hi, Kevin. Hello, Chris. Good to be with you again. Who have we got today, as if I didn't know? Uh, we have got a fantastic guest today, and uh, we're focusing on Pillar 4, which is the business pillar. So if we think of our recurring revenue roadmap, uh, step four in the whole process is you know choosing your pillar. And so we're focusing on business and Terry Blackburn is our guest today. And Terry is from the Northeast, like your good self, Kevin, and he's a real whirlwind. And uh, we definitely had some fun having a conversation with Terry. How appropriate it is uh, that this is episode 125, because, you know, a long time ago when um, I was traveling from London to Newcastle, which people know is my home, although the accent is slightly less than Terry's, it was the Intercity 125, which is like a fast train between London and Newcastle, and Terry's fast, right? Everything about Terry is, you know, a million miles an hour, so he lives life fast and furious and on the edge, but do everything with purpose, though. So he's a man who's on purpose in so many areas of his life. So I would say you need to sit down with this podcast and take some notes and try and work out what are we going to debrief? What pillars does he talk about? What are the issues that come up on the recurring revenue roadmap? What could you take from what he has to say? Because there's a mountain of free stuff that he's going to share with you. And we'll have a good go at debriefing it afterwards once we've catched our breath or caught our breath even. (laughs) All right, let's uh, head over to our conversation today with Terry Blackburn. Terry, very warm welcome to Wealth Talk today. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Chris. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem at all. And uh, obviously, I'm sure there'll be some ties with Kevin with the uh, Northeast connection there. And yeah. uh, we've just been having a chat about all the things that have been going on over the last week or so. So exciting times. But we're here today to hear about how you have managed to double your business turnover in COVID. So really difficult period. And some of the strategies, perhaps, that you can share with us today and our listeners. So looking forward to hearing that, Terry. But why don't you just start off by giving us a bit of background on yourself and your business? Thank you. Yeah, um, just to add to that, the talent, all the talent lives up north, Chris, in case you didn't know that. <laughs> it all lives up north. Um, but yeah, I'm Terry Blackburn. I'm 32. I'm from Newcastle upon Tyne. Uh, I've got a few different businesses, mainly around financial services, um, life insurance, mortgages, Um I'm picking the property as well. So I've got three property companies, three SPVs where we buy, refurbish and rent out properties. Um, yeah, really ambitious guy, father of two. Um, love my life, love my job. And that, that's that's me. Yeah. And then your company, Bespoke Financial Group, uh, how mm-hmm. long has that been uh, running for? So seven and a half years. It was 2014, um, June, I think it was. Yeah. So there's different branches of Bespoke. That I ran by my friends. Uh, I run Newcastle. My best mate runs Bespoke Teesside. So collectively, we're the number one life insurance brokers in the country. Uh, last month, for example, we did 1,200 life insurance policies as a business. So that's 1,200 families we've helped with life insurance. So anybody who knows that that industry, you know, that's quite far ahead of the competition. So, so yeah. And uh, I was just, you know, having another look at your website and reading your mission statement. And it's really clear to see that, you know, the core values shine through. And and definitely we're going to hear that from you today as we speak further. And uh, I think you've really embedded that throughout your whole team as well. And hence the success that you're having, Terry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. And I'd like to think so. Yes, I, I'm a big believer in team culture and in ethics and morals and values have to be passed down, not just from the leaders of the business, but to every member of staff from the administrators to the salespeople, every layer of management, they need to have the same values um, for sure. Um, It's imperative, I feel, for a big business and to scale a big business and be successful, I think, in any industry, I think that, that's accurate. Yeah. So you mentioned there, you know, the business been running for seven and a half years. And, and last year, during COVID, you managed to 
increase the turnover from around 770,000 to 1.5 million. So, you know, impressive results there, Terry. So where where does this entrepreneurial bug come from? Um, I can't really pinpoint a certain time or, you know, my, my parents aren't entrepreneurs. I don't have any entrepreneurs in the family. Um, I can't really pinpoint a certain time or a turning point, but I've always knew that I was going to do something big. I, I don't know why. I don't want to come across as arrogant there, by the way, at all, because anyone who knows us wouldn't say that. Yeah, I'm, I've just always knew that I was going to achieve something big, and I've always believed that. And I think when you believe something, that's the starting point of anything. Anyway, you've got to believe in it. But I always just knew it. I'm very, very ambitious, and I'm very, very competitive. Um, and in sales is a competitive environment. So I, as soon as I got into sales, I just loved it whether that was being the top salesman in the in the country, which I was, to then having the biggest business, it's all it's all competition, right? And and I'm I'm just a bit like that in general. Um so yeah, there wasn't a to answer your question, there wasn't a, a specific point. I think it's just in me to be this way. So before we dive into the details then, Terry, I mean at the age of thirty two, how much do you put your success, your current success, down to just mindset and personal development? as opposed to actual business skills and business acumen and, and, and knowledge around, you know, how a, a business works. Probably the 80-20 rule, isn't it? it? The Pareto principle, I think probably it's 80% mindset, 20% your actual actions. Um, obviously, you've got, to, you've got to back things up with huge action. I take huge action every day. I'm up early, I work late, five days a week. Every, it used to be seven, but it's, it's five days now. You've got to back that, that up with action. But I do also believe that my mindset is is what kept us ahead of the competition. Um, yeah, I, I, I definitely believe that. If, if upstairs isn't right, then downstairs won't work. That's not a funny analogy. About <laughs> you know what I mean? It's all in the mind. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's start looking at some of the strategies then. So what were some of the things, let's let's go back to sort of pre-COVID. So business was going well, right? You know, um, but obviously then things completely turned on their head. So how did that actually impact you as a business and what did you do? Yeah, so so first of all, pre-COVID, we were, you know, life insurance and mortgage sales. We were face to face, so we generally went to our customers' houses or their places of work to see them for an appointment. Um, it was probably ninety percent face to face, ten percent over the phone. So obviously, instantly, we weren't allowed to go and do face to face. So you have two options at that point as a business. You furlough everybody and feel sorry for yourself and they all will just wait until it blows over. Or I remember speaking to one of my, my friends actually in London who um, I gave some great advice. He went, in 2008, when we had that last recession, you had to work twice as hard. And it was something along those lines. I had this conversation. I just remember sitting in my living room thinking, right, well, this is going to, I'm going to work three times as hard as I've ever worked and I'm going to make this into a positive. So I got everyone set up on Zoom as everybody did and we just marketed like hell and we just pushed even harder. I pushed recruitment, I pushed pushed sales, brand awareness, everything, three times more than what I've ever done before. Um, because you only have two choices. You, you, you either do it or you don't, don't you? You either push forward or you, or you stay where you are. But if you stay where you are, you go backwards. So I just made a conscious decision to push even harder in every part of my business and that's kind of what what happened. So that now, even st- it's probably slipped a little bit, but, but pr- when we're in the lockdowns, we were obviously a hundred percent over the phone instead of ten percent over the phone. And even now, when we're coming out of it and we're allowed to do face to face, we're probably I probably say as a whole business, probably seventy thirty. So seventy percent over the phone, only thirty percent face to face. Because what we found is you can help more people, we can speak to more clients, you can do more appointments in a day. Hence, help more people, make more money, make more sales, business, you know, you can do more when it's over the phone. The downsides of that are relationship building, rapport building isn't the same, obviously, over the phone as it is in person. So the way we got around that is injecting your personality down the phone, your tone of voice, standing up when you're on the phone, um, getting your words out crisply and cleanly, up and down with your tone of voice, enthusiasm, telephone technique training, we do that all the time. Um, and we've actually, you know, we've done 1.5 last year, April to April. We'll do two and a half this April to April. So we're growing at such a rate now. Um, 
And it's that, it's that, yeah, I think all of that is underpinned by mindset because I believe that we'll work three times as hard, we'll adapt, we'll evolve, and we'll go ahead of the competition. And, and that's kind of what we've done. Um, so that mindset, you know, clearly, clearly you have that mindset. How you mentioned training there. So how do you go about recruiting? And I know when we spoke previously, you said that almost, you know, everyone in the team is like friends or friends of friends. And, you know, mm-hmm. how do you instill that same spirit into all of them? Mm-hmm. Um, a few different ways, I think. It's, well, it starts at the recruitment, first of all. Um, if Even if they are amazing at sales, They've got the right personality type, the outgoing and all these things, and they know a lot of people, so they'll do well in this environment. But they're not not right fit for they're not a right fit for the business. I wouldn't take them on. Even if they were unbelievable at sales, perfect for this environment, as in this industry, this type role, selling life insurance. But they didn't click with the team, I wouldn't take them on. So they've, they've got to have had they've got to have they have to have the right values. They've got to, you know. I believe one one wrong person in this business could be cancerous and spread. It can cause an atmosphere. It can, you know, and some people might not want to come here. Some people might leave just on the basis of some other people. So it starts with the recruitment. And then after that, it comes down to the regular training. So we do motivational Mondays where every Monday I'll stand up, do a big sales training seminar on Zoom or in the office, and I motivate the hell out of everybody. Um and I do, yeah, everyone raves about these sessions. I should probably try and charge for them. Maybe. Um, but I, that, I love doing that. I love speaking really passionately and, and full of enthusiasm. And, and I am helping these people. I help my staff make more money and develop in the career. They then in turn help more families with life insurance and mortgages. And then the business wins as well. So it, it, it obviously all, it all clicks together. Um, but I motivate them regularly. We do loads of things like, I know we spoke prior to this this chat about team culture. I think too many people think a team culture is saying good morning and they take them out on the drink at Christmas once a year. Like that ain't team culture that we go out once a month. We're in the office all the time. We speak daily. We do loads of team building stuff. You know, we've got WhatsApp groups for all the all the team where everyone chats, everyone shares good news, share the positivity, we celebrate people's birthdays, everyone gets the birthdays paid off work you know just i just do i go over and above for the team because if i help the team they help the business and that and must yeah that must lead to you know word of mouth in both ways right amongst the team so they're telling other people hey this is a great place to work right so that just self-perpetuates more and more people kind of wanting to be part of that but then also on on the client side of things you know i i imagine a lot of your clients are referring people to you as well yeah, I mean, the, the whole business is based on referrals. So we don't do any paid advertisement. So we don't do pay-per-click campaigns. We don't do SEO campaigns and all that nonsense. Well, it's not nonsense. Um, and all that type of stuff, that that type of marketing. All we do is post on Facebook and we use our people to get more people. So our team goes and sees someone. We get an average eight referrals per customer. We will then sign up generally 50% of those referrals. So if I go and sell, if I sell to you, which I might after this call, actually, I'm going to ask if you've got life insurance. Um, so if you give me eight referrals, I'll sell to four of those. Those four give me eight each. And then it, it spirals like that. And that's why I take people on who who are well known and who know a lot of people and who've got a big network because I don't provide them with leads. They have to hunt for their own leads. And that's why having a good network is important. But going back to what you said, yeah, it's all referrals. Um I think that's part of the reason why we've been so successful is a lot of people don't know how to do it. They shy away from referrals. They wait for their phone to ring, whereas we ring other people. We're hunters. Um, so, yeah, and, 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 and yeah, you're right, the enthusiasm and everything else, it, it does. It makes people want to refer us because of the way we treat the customers. And and obviously that's a, a hugely important part what else would you say is is the USPs of the company? Because there's plenty of insurance, you know, brokers out there, plenty of mortgage brokers out there. So why do clients come to you? Um, a lot of it's, it's because it's a referral. 
So, you know, again, I, I went, I come to say you, you pass me on Kevin. When I ring Kevin up, I'll say it's something we do for Christian and his family and lots of his friends in such and such an area. And he's asked us to see if I can help you too. So if you've got five or 10 minutes now, I can talk you through what we do. So I'm using the, the influence of other people when I ring that next person down the referral chain. So when I speak to Kevin, I'll mention Christian, but then if Kevin refers us to John, when I speak to John, I'll say it's something we do for Kevin and Christian and such and such and such and such. So people buy off the influence of others, right? Um, and that, 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 that's how. And, and on your website, you've got hundreds of reviews and reading through them. They're always mentioning personal names of the people they've spoken yeah, yeah. to. So I imagine at the end of every call, you're asking as well, can you, you know, leave a review if you've had a good experience? And again, that's just really putting out the, um, the social proof, isn't it? Definitely. I think reviews are, are, are key these days. You know, people will look you up on Google, on Facebook, the, the will. It's an educated marketplace now. It's not the days where people just walk down the street and walk into the mortgage brokers on the high street anymore. I truly believe those days are gone. I, I believe people will ask the friends for a recommendation. Who did you use for your mortgage or your life insurance? Or they'll see some review or they'll check you out on Facebook or they'll use that search bar on, on Facebook Life insurance brokers, Newcastle, or whatever it may be. Reviews are key. People are key. Just just like a bad review probably is ten to you know, what do they say? A negative review is ten times more powerful than a positive, I think they say. Um but yeah, reviews are key, man. The key. Yeah. And how many members have you got in the team at the moment, Terry? Um sales staff. Um just in the Newcastle office we'll have thirty three. Collectively across the whole of Bespoke, there's hundred and twenty ish. Um, changes all the time, obviously, because we're recruiting like mad. I've got about, I think I've got about nine people doing training at the moment to join just the Newcastle branch. Um, that's another key to the success. It, it's never ending recruitment. It's never ending because the second you think I've made it, I've got the best team, I've got the biggest team, there's someone snapping at your heels always. So I never get complacent with recruitment. I'm always looking for good people. If someone's got the right personality type and they're a nice person, they've got integrity and morals and they've, they know a lot of people and they've got contacts, I can teach them how to do this. Um, so, yeah, always recruiting, always. Okay. So, so obviously, we've talked about the increase in, in the, the number of team members, so therefore more sales. So that's certainly helped with the turnover uh, during that COVID period. Were there any other strategies, any other things that you implemented which have helped you to get to that figure? Um. No, no, I don't think so. It was it was literally just more of the same. And this is actually a good point that, that hopefully people can relate to is sometimes I feel in business, people look for that magic, the magic thing to do, the magic marketing strategy, the the special source that, you know, it's something that they're going to do that's going to sometimes it's not something new. Sometimes it's just more of the fundamentals, the basics. Um, and that's all we've done. We just done the basics consistently, turned the volume right up and ramped everything up um, in every way. And, and that, that, yeah, there's no, sometimes the answer's right in front of you and sometimes you just need to do what, what you're meant to do, you know. Uh, I think that's a very good lesson, actually, because it's so easy to complicate business, right? And there's so many things that you can do. Obviously, on the internet, you've got so many people telling you all these different things. Um, but... At the end of the day, there's some very key uh, KPIs, right? Um, so how do you focus on that within the business? You seem like you're definitely the creator, the driver of the business. Do you, are you good at keeping a check on these numbers or do you have someone in the business to help with that? Yeah, so so I've got a, a, a really good support system around us. So I've got a really good t- back and team, which is I think, again, is really, really key. That's in the property business and the, the financial services business. Um, I am all about the vision and the motivation and the energy and the ideas but we 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 are big on KPIs also. So um, sales is just numbers. A lot of businesses is just numbers. If you drill it down and you take the emotion out of it, it's just a numbers game. So we focus on obviously client acquisition, how many clients you get. We focus on what the client value is. We focus on the conversions in terms of if you get this many referrals, how many will you convert? Out of out of those, how many you convert? How much does that generate? in income, which we can then really break that down. So I've got it with my team, literally how much per phone call they make. Even if the client says yes or no, 
we can work it out how much each phone call makes. Um, so I'm really big on KPIs. We um, we do administrator of the month, broker of the month, mortgage broker of the month, life of, life insurance broker of the month. We also do a quality award of the month. So I've got a customer care manager who rings all the clients to make sure they're happy with the service. If there's anything else they can do for, we can do for them. Is there anything else that we want to improve on or that they feel we could improve on? So I, I've incentivized them on sales figures, but also on quality, um, which is a KPI. I am big on KPIs. I certainly don't confess to be in numbers, you know, one of these whizzes on numbers. I know me numbers. I know how much you make and I know, you know, I, I know me numbers, but I'm certainly not accountant book keeping type i need help with stuff like that no well we uh, we give all of our members uh, an assessment it's called wealth dynamics and it shows that people are, obviously have their strengths in different areas some are very creative some are connectors some love the details and you just got to have the team right who love all of those things working together and that's the magic the magic source so the business we've talked about terry so what are you mm-hmm. now doing in terms of your own wealth building so how are you using some of those business profits and and kind of building out into other wealth building pillars? Um, so mainly, mainly property. So there's three SPVs that I've got, um, I think just under 40 units I've got at the moment. Um, so I do an intercompany loan from Bespoke into the SPVs um, to fund the purchases. Pretty much everything that I do is BRR. So you buy, refurbish, you finance model. Um, I've got a great team of builders um, that I've worked with for quite a while. Um, so yeah, so it's it's all about property for me. I love property. I'm just as passionate for property as I am for life insurance. Um, again, that, that going back to KPIs, that is a complete KPI numbers game property, which far too many people miss. There's too much emotion in property. They view a property and think, oh, it's lovely. It would rent really well. This that doesn't you know stop getting tied to it, and then they over bid, they over pay for stuff. You know all this craziness that's going on right now bid and war stuff going for huge amounts over asking. It's just pure numbers property. Let the numbers guide you. Focus on a yield or a return that you want and, and that's it. But to answer your question, yeah, it's all property. Love property. And I believe that I'm going to go on to big things in property. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, well, I think you know one of our uh, previous guests uh, on episode 90, we had Ryan Luke. And uh, yeah, yeah. Ryan, yeah, Ryan. Ryan lives not too far away from you, I believe. And um yeah. The title of that episode was Adopting a Thousand Property Mindset. And uh, and again, I know that we were chatting previously and you said, you know, start off small. You have the vision initially, right? 10 properties, three grand a month. And, you know, you're pushing that now. So I guess your vision is expanding towards that thousand property mindset, right? Yeah, 100%. I think a lot of, like we spoke the other day, um, a lot of people, it's 10 properties initially, isn't it, right? And that that's great. And that's anybody who gets to that fair play to them, that, that's still a big target and a good a good thing to do for you and your family to get the 10 properties is an achievement but when you get there it's like right what next 20 then what next and then all of a sudden you your goals change and your perception of everything change your perception of what you can achieve changes it becomes almost a little bit of a game if it's not too much about financials so so i'm just really ambitious me so i'm thinking right well my target is 100 properties by age 35 that's three years i'll do that but now I'm starting to look further and think, right, well, 45, I want 1,000. But I know for an absolute fact, when I'm 40-something, I'll be thinking, right, what's next? And there'll be so, I, I just have to keep moving the ball, mate, because progression is happiness and it just it keeps you, what else are you going to do? Like, you need something to do, don't you? Absolutely, yeah. And so I guess in summary then, Terry, um, okay. you've broken through the million pound you know, barrier. You're now broken through the two million pound barrier. Um, what would be some kind of top tips for budding entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs who are, you know, kind of earlier in their journey? Um, if you look back, the things that have really been the key differentiators in your success, what would those be? Um, so advice, I would think a great line that I, I think it was a guy called Brad Sugars. He's the action coach guy. I think you've, you've got people in your thing, yeah, haven't you? With him. Yeah. So his definition of a business, I'm sure it was him I watched at a seminar in Harrogate. Um, where he said the definition of a business is a commercial and profitable enterprise that runs and grows without you. So if you're an entrepreneur in business, you need to change your mindset as in the bit, if, if it's all you, you're self-employed, for example, and you don't have a team, you've got a small team, you're doing everything. You don't have a business that's a job. And that was a real light bulb moment for me a few years back 
because I was the business. It was all me. I was doing bits of admin. I was doing all the management. I was doing everything. But you you can only go so far with that, and you're exchanging your time for money. So it's it, it's advice would be to a proper business. You need a team. And yes, you, you I've been there where you think, oh, but I've got to shell out a salary, and they'll never do it as good as me. Everyone thinks that, right? But even if they do it eighty percent as good as you, that that's good enough, and you you can then free up your time to do other things and focus on other parts of the business, working on the business instead of in it. All that stuff is is great advice, definitely. Um, other advice, if you've got a team, I think that, that a huge turning point in my business was culture, was just getting this culture right. Last year was definitely a turning point. Lockdown was a turning point when I decided to work more, have more interaction with the team, have more Zoom meetings and all these type things. Um, so team culture is is so, so important because you can have a huge business and it can be like a deck of cards if you've got, if the foundations aren't right and there's the wrong people in the wrong positions, the wrong bums on seats, it can all fall. Um, so team culture will be a big one and, and um, goals as well. I know it's a simple concept, Right, everyone writes goals at New Year's Eve on the for New Year's resolutions, but nobody really sticks to them. Goals aren't just once a year; they should be all the time. You know, stick them up on your. I've got affirmation cards all over my house. My mates think I'm like mental, and there's like just <laughs> quotes everywhere. I can't escape it. It's on my laptop, my phone, my office, my home office, office here. That it's everywhere, and I, and I, I'm a bit obsessed with it. <laughs> I do. I you're, do think you're hardwired that. for success. <laughs> yeah, I, I just can't escape it. Every single day, bar none, I listen to audio, I read, I write down my goals, write down my affirmations. I, this is my. It's my life. Um, I don't, no, it's not my life because business isn't my life. I've got children and partners and things. Um, partners, partner, <laughs> one partner. I say partner, I say one partner. Oh, I love to be Louise. Um, so yeah, so it, just going back, goals is. Um, Goals is is so, it's so important. It's so important. And then just the right people around you, right? They've got to support you with that as well. Oh, definitely. I've had the wrong partner before. Um, and that does, if you're doing amazing at work, your career's booming, you make loads of money, you're enjoying it, you've got a great team, and you come home to negativity and stress and hassle, and blah, blah, it, it dampens all of this. So you've got to have that right. And you can achieve more if, if the home life's right. And I've learned that lesson for sure. There is my partner at the moment, so supportive. She's in business as well. She's got property as well. She owns an estate agent. She's very switched on. That that was probably a good turning point for my career as well when I when, when I got with Louise because she spurs me on. Instead of coming home getting, you know, stop buying properties, Terry. You don't need any more properties. Why, why are you recruiting more people? You don't need a bigger business. Now it's like, well, come on, what are you doing? Buy some more, you know, that, that, that's really important. But we hear that term, don't we, a lot, work-life balance, you know. But uh, as you say, if it's out of balance, then uh, absolutely can have an impact. So um, we're recording this on video, Terry, as we always do. And uh, in the background, I can see Rags to Riches show. And so yeah. tell us a little bit about your podcast. Yeah, yeah. So um, I just thought, to be honest, I've listened to your podcast loads. I do, talking, going back to what I said, self-development, audio books, Audible. I listen to it all the time. So I listen to Audible as well as, as podcasts. I listen to them all the time. I really enjoy them. And I quite like the, the interview style opposed to just listening to somebody talk for seven hours about something. All of that's good. I just like the podcast thing. Um, learned lots from them previously. Um, I do know a lot of people, so I just thought, why not? It doesn't really cost anything to set one up. Um, but honestly, what I've found is I'm getting, I'm actually getting massively inspired by me chatting to people. It's networking as well, which is great. The phrase that your network is your net worth and all that. Um, I've had some deals from it. I've had the exposure I've got from it. I didn't kind of expect, I haven't marketed it apart from on my Instagram people in Australia, people from America, people could bring in deals to us, angel investors. I'm like, oh my God, this is like, I'm really enjoying this. And it's help. It's actually helping with business as well. Um, so, but the show is actually just about people's interesting stories about people going from rags to riches or just nothing to something that can be in your health. It can be in your fitness because you could be really overweight and to get really fit. 
they have a story to tell. It's been going from being skinned to really wealthy. And just to cheer, you know, people who've turned their life around um, is what the show is about. And it seems to be going down really well. So Great. Well, I'm sure some of our listeners will be plugging into that as well. And um, Terry, it's been a real pleasure talking with you today. Thank you for sharing some of the ways that you've gone about doubling your business in COVID. Well done for that. And obviously you're on a meteoric rise to success. I can see that. And uh, I'm sure we will uh, invite you back on again in the future to share some more ideas with our listeners. No, I'd love that, Chris. Thank you so much for having us on. And um, yeah, thank you. Okay, lots of fun there speaking with Terry. And I love the way he just simplifies business, right? Focus on a few key things. So we can dive into those lessons in just a second. But let's quickly head to Trustpilot. And uh, we've had some more reviews this week. So thanks, everyone, for leaving reviews. We really, really appreciate it. In fact, we've just hit our 150th review on Trustpilot. So uh, so that's a landmark. So uh, let's push, push on to 200 now. But I'm going to pull one out from David this week. David said, wealth builders are passionate about your pension. Wealth builders help me transfer my SIP into a SAS and provide excellent advice along the way. And I have liaised closely with Paul Brooks throughout this journey and highly recommend other people to do the same. As far as I am concerned, Wealth Builders is the best organization in the UK to work with in this area. You will never meet a team that is more experienced and more passionate about your pension. There you go. Passionate about pensions. Well, talking about passion, crumbs, you can't hide Terry's, can you? You can't, no. But just before that, actually, you uh, you had your visit to the House of Lords, didn't you, last week, Kevin? Oh, so I, yes. I how did. did you get on with that? That was very nice. I had uh, cream tea in the House of Lords, and I think I put a little pictures on social on there. And I think you said I was preened and screened. <laughs> of course, you've got to go through the – I was suited and booted, and you've got to go through the, the right security. But, no, it's, it's really good to know that there are people in high places – who are passionate about getting a fair and good value for people in pensions. And I'd have to say that uh, Baroness Ros Altman is known for that. And, um, you know, she's quite passionate about the pension subject, as as we are too, because it's the mainstay of people's wealth in the UK. And I'm sure it's the case in other countries that listen to us as well. You know, that pension uh, forms the backbone for most people of where they're future income is going to come from. So spending some time to try and give people better value, uh, better returns, and to have a pension they can get connected to instead of disconnected and feel proud about owning instead of really just sort of ambivalent about that ownership. And, um, yeah, so that that's good. And I'm, I'm on that soapbox, and I will continue to be on that for a very, very long time, Chris, because uh, I think it's an area that people need – to get more education on. So happy to be leading uh, that in the small way that I am. Yeah. So, you know, pensions in our seven pillars of wealth is pillar number two. And we're hopefully one of the leading experts in the UK in that subject. And David certainly thinks we are there in the review today. And um, we've got seven pillars. And I think it's just worth for new listeners because we're getting lots of new listeners every week. We're, I think, 125,000 downloads on the podcast, well over 100 countries now. So for any new listeners, I definitely would direct you back to episode number one and uh, the first sort of few episodes where we really lay the foundations of the whole wealth building process. And that would be very useful for you to listen to if you haven't checked those out already. Yeah, good reminder from time to time, because we're so used to it, aren't we, Chris, that we use the language and take that language for granted, which is why we like to do a debrief, because you know certainly, you know Terry started off at you know that first point on the recurring revenue roadmap, demonstrating the importance of mindset. Yeah, he did. I asked him, you know, where does this entrepreneurial spirit come from? And you know, he just said <clears> he <throat> always had that belief from a young age that he was going to do some great things. And so, you know, whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're right. Is the the old saying? And Terry, mm. you know is getting off to a good start there with that that strong mindset and um well you know we also used to talk about kevin that you know there's no neutral in wealth building there's either you know you're either moving forwards or you're moving backwards right yeah so you know there's no there's nothing about neutral here you don't go anywhere in a, in neutral you either got your foot on the brake and a lot of people took the covid opportunity to to apply the brake and let's wait and see and uh Waiting and seeing is never a good strategy. 
but we saw in here with uh, Terry, you know, a firm press on that accelerator and uh, powered through and, um, you know, just didn't stop. And, and I think I applaud him for that. And obviously that mindset has helped him power through and his business has gone from strength to strength. Yeah. So um, during that period, obviously, he's doubled his turnover from 770,000 to 1.5 million. And um, some of the key things uh, that Terry did during that time, and it was very clear that one of the strengths of the business <clears throat> is the team. In fact, I would say, you know, it's all built around the team and getting the right culture. And you hear the terms of culture and vision, but they are important. And you can see the difference there when you have everyone really on board with the mission of the business and, uh, you know, enjoying the place that they're working. And, and that's certainly something that Terry has instilled from the top, from the leadership level down. Yeah, I think, you know, I think he said loud and clear in many different ways. In fact, if you were to listen again, that he'd rather have people who are the right fit than people with the right skills, but the wrong fit, you know, which actually is a bit of a reflection of what we're doing in, the wealth builder business in our own team. And then for those who are interested in following our journey and what we're doing there, it's similar in some respects to how Terry's uh, dealing with his, which is the importance of creating culture. And we're following um, a system that we call the EOS or the entrepreneur entrepreneurial operating system, which is a just a way of thinking uh, come out of a book called Traction by Gina Whitman, and it's really helped us, Chris, to focus on creating our core values, which uh, we'll be resharing with our team uh, later on this month, in fact, uh, on the way day. Um, and also, you know, our core principles, what we're trying to achieve, who we're trying to achieve it for, and all of these good things. And um, what makes us unique? Uh, there's lots of things that this uh, book, I would recommend you get a copy if you're in business. And uh, I think intuitively, though, Terry seems to have uh, embraced some of those things, whether he's read the book or not. Yeah. And some other really sort of fundamental aspects is building the business around referrals. And, and that's working incredibly well. And it was interesting to hear the stats that there's eight referrals per customer and 50% of those become clients. And, and that's really strong. Right. And, and I think Terry can definitely teach something. Uh, about how to how to build referrals into your business there because uh, you know that's that's impressive. Yeah, I mean, if you look at any business, it has to operate very strongly in a niche. We talk about that in wealth builders, and he's got a very strong niche, which is the protection of family, and uh, his methodology is to do that through the use of referrals. And he's got a whole training process that he engages to help people to do that, and says that most of the businesses singularly fail to do that. You know, they're relying on external marketing rather than every client essentially coming from a referral and potentially even a referral from every client. That's how strong the culture is built, not just within the team, but within the client bank themselves. So you know, that's a great niche to have, sort of selling um, and arranging protection and doing so on the basis of referrals. That's an incredibly strong niche. And I think he can demonstrate that his business is outstanding in that field, not just in terms of statistics, but also in terms of you know how he comes across and how it seems to me, even though I've not been in his business personally, and will very much look forward to one day going up to spend some time with him in his business to see this culture come to life and see the see the real people doing it in the way that he teaches. Yeah, yeah. And again, just on the team side of things he talked about incentivizing the team so member of the months you know uh obviously having fun sharing having birthdays off all those good things so you know i think that that oozes through when you have that culture inside the company um to uh, people wanting to do business with you um and um and then we looked at the figures the numbers because obviously as terry said you know business is is a numbers game mm. and um property it was very particular, wasn't he, about the property, which is obviously pillar number four. And uh, those people who buy property will often at the beginning of their journey buy on emotion rather than buying on the core numbers. So he was very clear on that. You know, business is about numbers and 
Um, not exclusively, it's not at the cost of anything else, but you've got to know your numbers. Mind you, and we have to pull up Terry for a thing there, because he did say he had partners, plural. <laughs> but we couldn't quite count the numbers of life partners he had. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we need to have a little joke <laughs> at his expense on that one. Better, better not be sharing this podcast with his uh, his other half there. So, um, yeah, um, and we know through Wealth Dynamics, right? Again, Wealth Dynamics is one of the starting points of, of our roadmap is knowing yourself, you know, what's your entrepreneurial profile? And some people, you know, the numbers is not an area that they enjoy doing or that they're particularly good at. So, you know, wealth building business, it's all about collaboration. You can't do it by yourself or if you can, but it's going to be a long, slow, hard journey. Yeah, that's right. I definitely feel it's been so clear from what we do inside Wealth Builders. If you again, if you look at those reviews, you'll see the word community come up time and time and time again. And that community builds the very essence of um, an enjoyable journey, a, jo- a journey of personal transformation so that you get stronger, you get better, as well as the results get better by doing so in a community, not in a DIY environment which is how so many people build their wealth by trial and error and uh, or Googling their way to apparent success, which is definitely not the right way, at least not in our view. Right, Chris? Yeah. So, you know, I think a lot of parallels really with with Terry's journey there and, and how he's approached business. And um, again, comes back to mindset, right? During COVID, we all had the same difficult uh, period. Um, obviously, some was harder for others, but um, you know, it's how you react to that. And that's the difference. And we've seen that within our own wealth building community, those people that have really excelled um, over the last 12 months as well. And uh, m- many of those we've had on the podcast as our member spotlights and uh, many more to come. Yeah. And the other thing that I would pick up, Chris, is that business is an asset um, and it's an asset that fits within the seven pillars in number five. But you could see also, though, that Terry was building wealth from the profits in his business. If you heard him say, I lend money from my business to an SPV. And now an SPV, for those who don't know, is a special purpose vehicle. It's like creating a separate company with the objective of achieving something in property. So that's what an SPV is. So he's lending money from his company that is making profit in a business to create a separate business almost, a separate entity, an SPV, which he then uses to buy and accumulate a portfolio of property, which really means then uh, he's using his business as a vehicle to build another wealth building pillar, which is the pillar of property. And you could see that he's also just as focused in terms of numbers on getting to a figure of, uh, I think it's 100 properties um, by the age of 35. Yeah. Right. Okay. No, that's that's absolutely fine. You know, what a laudable thing to do to be clear about that and have the mindset to know you can achieve it. Whereas somebody else might you'd be happy with three or four or five or ten. And that's fine. We're not saying you should have an aspiration of a hundred properties by any age, if that's within your capability and that will help you do what you want to do and help you get to where you want to achieve for your own financial independence, then that's fine. And actually there was a somebody, his um, compatriot, not quite, but but also a local guy, wasn't there, who had a thousand property mindset. And I think you mentioned that. Ryan Luke, that's right. Episode 90. So I'll definitely link to that in today's show notes. So uh, anyone listening can check that one out after this episode. And um there's another pillar that Terry is now moving towards. So, yeah. you know, the pillar of IP, uh, which is obviously creating digital assets. So his podcast now, which is, you know, building up connections and that's leading to more business. And those podcasts are going to be out there now forever working for him 24 hours a day. So, um, yeah, you know, there's no stopping young Terry. Is there? Well, I think I'm just waiting for the invitation to, to be a guest on his podcast. Well, I have, to, I have to give him a little nudge. I'm sure he would be accommodating there. And I'm sure um, he would. yeah. So, um, okay. So, um, I, yeah, I, I think we've pulled out pretty much all the lessons that Terry shared with us today, unless you've got any further ones, Kevin. No, I think, um, I think you're going to signpost a few of the things because often you get lessons and learn things in bunches. And so as not to get overwhelmed, just think about the importance in business, having a niche, being outstanding in your niche. Okay. So that's, that's a very good lesson to pick up from here. 
The second is to know your numbers. And that's being clear on the target you've got to become financially independent and then the methodology you're using to do that, um, allowing the numbers to help guide you rather than be the only thing that guides you. So make sure if you're buying property, as an example, you're doing so based on the outcome you want, not just on the look and feel of a property, but on what the results are. Uh, I mean, I would I would probably go on the business, link back to Chris Henry's podcast, Chris, mm-hmm. um, which was the measure of the five ways, yeah, you know, different ways that you can improve different performance measures inside a business, uh, which then if you work on each of those metrics, you can achieve a more successful business. And we know that most business owners get sucked into the fabric of the building of the business and often lose the sight of using the business as a vehicle. They get consumed by the very vehicle itself. So we have to be careful of that. So look to make profit and then reinvest those profits in other businesses or turn your business into a a business that can run without you, which uh, although Terry didn't talk too much about that, but Crumbs is only in his early 30s, so it's probably a bit early for him to be thinking about that. But I dare say that business could run without him at some point, and therefore he will have achieved a healthy contribution to his overall wealth from business, from property, from IP, and so on. So take those lessons, and if somebody... A Geordie can do it. Anybody can do it. Right? <laughs> All the talents up north, apparently. <laughs> so uh, we have the you... water up there, I think, Chris. Yeah, yeah. We uh, hope you enjoyed listening today. And if you're not already connected to us, then do join us in our Wealth Builders community in, on Facebook. And you can head to Facebook, search for Wealth Builders, or just join as a free member. Head to wealthbuilders.co.uk forward slash membership. And uh, yeah. we'll see you there. Yeah, you've got nothing to lose by becoming a free member. I mean, we do want you to participate. We do want you to engage with us. And that's the whole point. We said about community and we're determined to to help you get involved. Um, If you're a DIYer or you just like to stay on the sidelines, then uh, probably we're not the right place for you because we we like to participate. I wish my football team were participating more at a higher level, Chris. Don't worry. the, The water, they're not drinking the water up there. The team aren't anyway. So uh, my football team aren't doing so well, but they've got some money now, right? So I'm happy about that. Don't don't, don't you worry. I'm sure things will be different <laughs> in the near future. Yeah. So um, and again, if you enjoyed this episode, if you think there's anybody else who might enjoy it, then hit share. Um, if you want to help us out, if you're enjoying it, then hit share. And uh, we will get more people listening, more people downloading, more people building their wealth. And that means more impact in the world. And uh, that's the key. <laughs> All right. Well said, Chris. Well said. (laughs) All right. So uh, we'll catch you all same time, same place next week. Mm -hmm. And until then, my friend, see ya. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget that we are constantly updating our resources inside the Wealth Builders membership site to help you create, build and protect your wealth. Head over to wealthbuilders.co.uk slash membership right now for free access. That's wealthbuilders.co.uk slash membership.